Is that right? So this is a very important function of the plasma proteins and hemoglobin that it grabs the extra, always, all the time it is having some monkeys, some protons. But if there are more protons, it will grab the extra protons. And if there are less protons, it will release some of its own protons. In this way, you try to stabilize the proton concentration in the blood, which help to stabilize the monkey concentration, proton concentration, that is pH. Have a seat. Right? So, please, you should know four functions of hemoglobin. This is a kid's business. Even high school students will say there's the oxygen transport and carbon dioxide transport. It is buffering proteins. Right? Acid base, they play a role in acid base balance. This is the first chapter of biochemistry, acid-base balance, right? pH, buffers. What are buffers? Buffers are just a system of molecules which can reversely bind some protons and if there are more protons in the system, they grab them. If there are less protons in the system, they release them. In this way, buffer try to stabilize the major changes in the pH, in the fluids, that's it. And plasma proteins, especially hemoglobin is a protein which plays as a buffer also, not only a transporter. Okay, so it's a acid base, right, balance. Now, any other function of the hemoglobin? You may be thinking why hemoglobin is being taught in the lecture of carbon dioxide transport. Very soon we'll see hemoglobin really plays a role in carbon dioxide transport, not only oxygen. Any other function of the hemo hemoglobin? I'm about to be impressed by someone. No one wants to be impressive. Everyone is humble by nature or by circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Okay, let me tell you. You know, at the point of him, not only oxygen can bind, nitric oxide can also bind from the lungs. Nitric oxide can also bind with hemoglobin. And nitric oxide also binds with the beta chains. So what really happens? That hemoglobin not only takes up the oxygen from the lungs, from that area it also takes a little bit nitric oxide. And as it delivers oxygen to the tissues, it also delivers nitric oxide to the smaller arterioles. And nitric oxide dilates the arterioles. This is another function of hemoglobin. Another function of hemoglobin. hemoglobin. Right? Now let's come back. Uh, we are talking about this 4 ml carbon dioxide which is produced every minute and we need to be transported back to the lungs in a safe form, right? What really happens? RBC play a very big role, right? Now, in the RBC, okay, before you, I will make, you have to tell me what is it? What is it? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Okay, I'll make it different color so that uh, you don't confuse it with something else. This is your hemoglobin. Uh, let's suppose this is heme group and globin. I've just made monomer, but actually there are a lot of molecules of hemoglobin in one RBC, a lot of molecules, right? This is one thing. Then I have to make a very special type of enzyme here. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very smart enzyme. Okay, it's a happy enzyme. This enzyme has a very special function. You know what it does? It loves to fuse the carbon dioxide with water. Now, carbon dioxide, whenever it is present in plasma, of course it is highly lipid soluble. It also crosses the cell membrane of RBCs. So carbon dioxide is also present in the RBC membrane. Is that right? So carbon dioxide is constantly produced by the cells and under high partial pressure it is pushed from the cells to the interstitial fluid, to the plasma, to the RBCs. Within the RBCs, what really happens? Carbon dioxide level rapidly fall. Why? Of course carbon dioxide level should fall here somehow so that carbon dioxide supply continues there. Where the carbon dioxide go? Actually, this enzyme fuse the carbon dioxide with water. So water and carbon dioxide together under the influence of this enzyme, right? 
This will convert into what? Yes, H2CO3, that is carbonic acid. Is it right? So what should be the name of this enzyme? Yes, it is called carbonic anhydrase. Actually, carbon dioxide and water can fuse together without this enzyme, but very slowly. But in the presence of this enzyme, carbon dioxide and, and water fuse together and make carbonic acid. And this reaction in the presence of this enzyme is 5,000 times accelerated. So almost, almost instantaneously, any carbon dioxide which is available in RBCs fuses with the water and produces, yes, carbonic acid. And carbonic acid immediately breaks down into, yes, bicarbonates and protons. Right? In this way, carbonic acid, again, this enzyme also plays a role in this point, point as well. Breaking down of, you can say, breaking down of carbonic acid into protons and bicarb. Is that right? Now, actually this enzyme work in any direction. It can work in both direction. But why in RBC especially working in this direction? Because constantly carbon dioxide supply is coming. So by mass action, it has to convert carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid and break it down into protons and bicarb. Is that right? Now, where the carbon dioxide is gone? It has converted to a new chemical form. Now it is incorporated within bicarbonate. Is that right? Now, uh, this proton, you know, it's a monkey, highly reactive, right? It may damage here and there. So it should be grabbed by hemoglobin molecule. In the hemoglobin molecule, for example, in beta chain and other chains also, the special type of amino acids and especially histidine amino acids, uh, they are having special hooks. What are these hooks? Negatively charged points. And they can hook these, what? Protons. So these protons get hooked with this. Now are these protons free or they are bound? Bound. Are they now free to change, PA, to change significantly any pH? No. So in this way, this highly dangerous reactive proton is associated with the hemoglobin, captured by the hemoglobin, right? And now we are left with what? Bicarbonate. bicarbonate. If bicarbonate stay here, then of course this reaction will stop. If product keep on accumulating here, naturally,